Hello, how do you do? Today is January 20th, 2020. It's a nippy one, and that's what inspired today's project. I do most of my work down in a very cold basement, and sometimes the cold is welcome, say on a hot, sunny day. It's a nice relief, but at the end of January in winter, it is not welcome. It is very cold, and I would rather be warm and working. As things are currently, if I want to do work upstairs, I need to do preparation, which sometimes kills my inspiration. I grab a box, and I fill it with a jar and brushes and ink and all that type of jazz. My goal today is to create something that is a self-sustaining unit that will always be there when I want to work upstairs. So when it comes to designing things, it's not really my strong point. And thinking about things, uh, in the past I tend to over-engineer everything and it would be an ugly mess. So I've decided to just focus on the basics of what I need for this. And I've actually planned, which is wild. I've written down all the things that I would like my portable art station to have, which I need a water jar to clean my brushes. I'd like something to hold the paint palette uh, because you don't want to dump paint on the couch or anywhere. You want it to stay secure there. And then you need a place for your brushes, your pencils, and your pens. Uh, also, uh, I just thought of it now. If I was using pen and ink, where I keep this could also double as uh, an ink holder. So that's cool. I like that idea. So I want a pencil sharpener. Uh, I need a place to put the cat. Um, I would like uh, some place for rags because I need to clean off the brushes. And I would like it to be comfortable. That would be nice. I have, was inspired by the uh, simplicity of the old school desks that have the inkwell hole, uh, have the hole in the top for ink. And this just lifts up and students kept all their goodies inside. That's what mine will do. This section here, this will have a place for my jar and uh, my palette. I can keep the pens and stuff inside. Also, this will be divided, so I can just chuck my work in there and close this so no cats can step on it when I'm done. So this needs to be at least as big as uh, my normal sized piece, which is probably nine by 12. Since I was fortunate enough to get all this pegboard that freed up a lot of the hard flat surfaces that I had. So now I have a bunch of flat things to work with, which is always a plus because oh man, I can never pass up a hard flat surface, especially for free. This will be my writing surface. So that's cool. Let's see if we have some hinges. It would appear that hinges are not on the menu today, but that is fine. We are creative people. We'll find a way through this together. Yesterday I also put together a new crosscut sled. And these are from my old crosscut sled, and these pieces uh, can be used for the sides. Outstanding. Now we can get started. I don't like these. I'm going to try to get rid of them. Maybe it'd be easier to just cut them. I'll be sitting with this on my lap, so it would probably make sense to put it on my lap. See how comfy that would be. Uh, you know? I like this size.
All right, here's our base. It measures in at 15 by 19. Now I need to make three angled pieces. I've never been too good with angles. So I've tried to pre-vis things here. Uh, these lines represent pieces of wood sticking out. I thought it'd be pretty sweet if the pallet just kind of rested uh, on top snugly in between the parts uh, and then uh, I wouldn't have to worry about it going anywhere. Uh, this has a little home there. I can make uh, an adapter so it won't jiggle around. And I'm trying to think of the right height. Uh, the entire thing. I know I want something covered here so I'll have a uh, place to do my art things. Maybe I will design it around the height of this cup and then this can uh, be placed on there in a slant. That's not going to cause me any trouble. Huh? Can you see it yet? Very exciting. Now the fun part. <clears throat> I got to measure here, measure there. How am I going to cut that? How am I going to cut that? I got to do three of these and they got to be pretty nice. So I guess it would make the most sense to cut the three strips at this length, trim them down, and then it's coming together. I like it. I've tied these three pieces together, and I'm going to attempt to do the cut on the top on a bandsaw. Uh, yeah, so. that was very stressful, but slow and steady wins the race, right? I was going to do divisions here for tools, um, but I've changed my mind up here. Uh, that's where I'm going to put my division. And then you can, this will just be like a junk drawer, and this is where the art can, the art and paper can sit. Make sure that can rest atop comfortably. Garbage can go under there. Well, not garbage, you know, like brushes and rags and shit. And then I could stuff that in with uh, a rag just in case there's any leaks or anything. Okay, to better explain what I'm doing here, what I want to do is create a junction point here. And this area that's whacked out there and this area here. I'm going to chip away with it using the table saw and then hopefully uh, they should fit together in a beautiful union. You know, there, there are special attachments, I think they're called dado cutters, uh, where it's a couple of different blades, but I don't have that. This measures in at two and a half inches, so I've raised the blade uh, an inch and a quarter with a few more millimeters to give a little leeway there. like I forgot to trim this piece down to size before I did that. That's easy. Well, here's our box so far. I, I, uh, I think I'm gonna cut a channel in there to make it a little bit easier to get in there. No, I'm not gonna do that at all. That's just gonna be another area for, like, paint and stuff. Alright, so what I need to concentrate on now it's a space right here. We'll start with the corners. It's a good place to start. That worked. Flip around the back here. Uh, right now I'm going to cut some veneer strips. I'm going to cut some to this thickness and then I'll figure out all the math for all the sides after that.
it would probably be very smart to do a test first. Looks like a good width. There was a slight creep that happened on the fence because I didn't tighten it down very well, but I think in the end that might be beneficial because it allows a little bit of a lip to come over and I can join the sides a little nicer. So I have the veneers for the top, the front, and the back. up this piece, just trace the line, and then put another one on there in reverse for the other side, since they're both the same. And I'll cut these on the bandsaw, uh, try not to. Let's get some veneers on there. I'll be using hot glue for this task, mostly because I didn't want to see any tack holes. Hot glue isn't my favorite, but you know, there's this is like particle board, and this is a bunch of different materials, and wood glue doesn't oops, wood glue doesn't really like playing ball with things that aren't straight up wood. That's not my job. It's not my department. This doesn't need to be the prettiest princess in the world. It just needs to function. How pretty. So there are a few spots, uh, since I cut this uh, freehand, that are a little bit higher than I'd like. So I'm just going to sand those parts down so mm -hmm. the top veneer lies flush. There we go. Got a little bit of Mr. Glue here. Or Mrs. Glue. Or whatever you prefer. Just gotta do that for everything. Okay, I've got all my veneers on. It's not perfect, but it's prettier than it was. I have areas for two pallets here if I so wish. And then there's areas underneath there to keep stuff. I don't know which will be the more comfortable position to work in, so I guess I'll discover that start using this. There's two more steps I need to take before our project is complete today. The first is going to be the actual drawing surface here. And then I spied over there. I have two handles from something that I disassembled before. And when this is full of stuff it's going to be a little bit heavy and awkward. So I'm going to put some handles on the side to make life a little bit easier. But now I gotta measure this, and I gotta cut down that. Okay, that fits on there nice, but I need to figure out a way to secure it so I can flip it open. I don't have a hinge. Maybe I'll just drill a few holes, just do it nice and easy, like zip ties or something. Well, I really uh, foregoed anything too fancy here. I just used duct tape as a hinge. Worked perfect. Used a little electrical tape around it to make it pretty. Now here are the handles that I have. They're going to require little drilling, little precision, and then we're done. So these handles have a teeny bit of a recess that needs to be drilled in there. The first hole, I'll drill 
the thickness of the screw and then I will drill a little bit more so the handle fits in nice. Okay, that was successful. Let's do the other side. Sometimes everybody needs a little help. Like me. Well, I probably could have planned a little better when it came to installing the handles. But other than that, uh, my pretty boy is done here. Here are some photos. That's it. Thank you, Patreon people. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.